Hey, welcome. It's Captain Matt, Motor Secret Weapon. I want to thank you for joining us for this uh, Sunday Night Live. Uh, we're getting ready to start here in just a couple of minutes here. Uh, we'll start about 8.30, but I wanted to welcome you. If you've never been to the to a uh, live, here's what you can expect. Just go ahead and, and chat in your uh, comment section, on whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube. Just ask your question, leave your comment there, and then as we go through the time, I just kind of scroll down all the comments and I try to answer them. Now, if it's something that I need to ask you a question, I may ask you a question and just put it in the chat again and uh, I'll come back and, and I'll get that information so I can give you a more personalized uh, response, something that's going to really add value for you. This is just something I do. One, it, it, it's great fun. I really enjoy it. It's helpful for the community. Just sharing my knowledge. Now, one thing that you need to know, I don't know everything about boats. I know a lot about boats. I've been, uh, been a boater since I was five. I've sold boats. Um, it's, it's something that is my, a big, big part of my life. With that said, I don't know everything. Matter of fact, sailboats have zero experience with sailboats. Bass boats, very little experience there. Bow riders, deck boats, center consoles, jet boats, twin engines, stern drives, outboards, inboards, all of that I have experience with. And if I have an answer, I'll give you my best answer. If I don't have an answer, I'll try to give you a resource that will be valuable for you. If I have an opinion, I'll try to give you that opinion, but let you know, this is what I think, not what I absolutely know. So I look forward to it. Here's a little video intro that uh, a subscriber made for me. Thanks, Bo. And uh, we'll see you on the live when it kicks off here in just a moment. Welcome, 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 everybody. Captain Matt, and why am I not seeing lines? Let me know if you can hear me. Um, it looks like for some reason my mic is quiet. So, Captain Matt, testing, testing. Um, test, test. It says I've got it. Test, test. So, let me know if you guys are hearing me out there in the live world. Um, I'm not sure why my little mic isn't lighting up like it's supposed to loud and clear. Okay, there we go. Well, I appreciate it, everybody. Um, I know we've been been gone for a, a couple of weeks. Uh, had um, had Easter. Had um, I just needed a, a, a personal day, not a personal day, but I needed a, just to take the whole day off. We had some family stuff going on, and uh, my daughter went to. Um, uh, went on a vacation with my father-in-law. Uh, he takes them each when they turn 10, he has taken his granddaughters to wherever they want to go in the world. So my, my youngest one, my oldest went to Paris a couple years ago. Um, uh, my youngest one is going or went to London, just got back this weekend. And so, uh, so we took some time to, to spend a little extra time together there. And, um, um, so it's good to be back. This is going to be a short one though. I've got a, I've got a crazy busy week coming up and, um, I have got, uh, it's got a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. I need to, to cut this one a little bit short tonight, but if you've got, um, if you got any questions, anything's on your mind, uh, like John O'Brien, congratulations on getting the stickers on the vote. Let's just hope that the, that the warmer weather comes sometime soon. And uh, hopefully that is, is um, there we go, that's better. Switch cameras as well here. Um, hopefully that gives you the, um, what do we got going on here? I guess we'll call that good. I'll just move myself over a little bit. Um, so hopefully the weather cooperates and we all get some warmer weather here shortly and we all can, um, 
get out of the water, get rid of this cold and get the season going. So I uh, appreciate everybody to let me know my stuff is, is working. Um, Bo, that's very cool. Um, a, uh, a mission trip to Mexico. Hopefully that was a good time. Hopefully you, uh, you did a lot of good down there and, um, Jeff, welcome. Any transom savers you recommend? Want to look for them? Trailer tip, trailer trip for the summer plan. You know, they're they're just a big metal metal rod. Um, depending on the motor and the trailer setup that you have, uh, there may be a better one for your specific situation. But overall, you know, it, it's a it's a metal rod that's going to keep your transom from from or your outboard bouncing. Um, on that transom. So just get one that's going to fit. I haven't heard of any that are like, they're, they're somewhat, they can be somewhat difficult to get on that back cross member. Again, it's going to be more dependent on your actual trailer uh, as to which one's going to be best and, um, and fit you. But no, I haven't heard one that's significantly better than another. Uh, matter of fact, um, matter of fact you'll hear people talk about they don't need one for their boat if you can trim let's see if i can find my outboard here if you can trim that motor and trailer like this is a common on a pontoon where you can just trim it all the way down and, and so it's it's in the the perfect support position where the the transom it, the weight's kind of distributed the way the manufacturer intended it to when you tilt it up, um, that's when you get a lot more bouncing because you instead of having this weighted part of the gear case down, uh, you've got that up in the air and, and it's it's sort of more prone to bouncing uh, because of, it's more at this angle. And so you get the weighted side, the weighted side, get going back and forth. That's where the transom saver really is helpful. Um, and uh, but the cross member on the trailer you know, could be right here, finding one that's going to have that right angle and that's going to be easy to get is um, is uh, going to be dependent on that trailer setup. Uh, let's see here. Just wondering if you received the pictures you requested to see what. Yes, I did. Um, I did receive those. I need to. I get so many emails. I get so many requests for for additional help. One thing it was, if you could send a video or like give me a description, because on the pictures, I was trying to figure out where I was looking. Um, and uh, the big thing, I think, is to also, if you could give me the direction of the wind and the current. So I, I forget um, I forget your name, um, Facebook user. It's just showing up generic. But she invested in the Best Boat Captain program. And her slip is in kind of a, uh, a corner. And so there's, and also if you could tell me what that little cutout section, if that's another slip that kind of goes diagonal in that corner, but you figure it's like this, um, it's, it's this right here. And her slip is this corner one here and there's a boat right there. So it's a challenging area, but there's going to be some, say easy ways, but there's going to be an approach that I think is going to be helpful for you in that situation. If you can give me those details of which way is the wind, which way is the current coming from, then what's that little thing that looks like just a slip, but there's a little cutout with water in it, um, what that looks like. Because what I'm going to recommend is if there's a way, it's almost going to be a cheat. If there's a way you can attach something to the edge of your dock, that's going to give you a little bit more line of sight. Cause the other thing that's happening is in that corner, um, this part of the dock sticks out further than the backside. And so what the challenge is there is you can't, you can't float in because by the time you might get past that, um, you, you'll miss the part that's sticking out. Um, but you can hit that back corner. So if you can fill me in on some of those details, I've got a strategy that I think is going to work. Um, and that is going to get you in the right position. Um, and another one, we might, it might be a situation where if, if the wind and the current is truly pushing you in um, to that situation and we can't get a little cheat system set up here on the inside corner, 
um, then what we may have to do is use a dock line um, as a uh, aid, an aid to docking. So uh, there'll be some strategies I can give you there for sure. And uh, this is just something I do when, it, because it helps me improve my best boat captain program. When I know the challenging situations that people are in that I haven't conceived of yet, I haven't been in, um, I can give some, some tactics like, hey, if you do this, that, and the other, it'll make it easier. And then I can also incorporate that into the program uh, to, to boost up the value to everybody. And um, that's something that I've done. And D, there you go. You got your name right in the comment. Um, D, I will, um, I'll look for that email from you, those details, and then probably record a video, probably get my boats out, draw up your, your uh, doc, the diagram, and show you what I'm, what I'm thinking that's going to be helpful for you. So thank you for that. Uh, had both boats in the water this weekend. That's a good weekend. Um, it was nice out. It was, uh, it's been, been pretty nice here in the Carolinas. For those that don't know, Brock is down in uh, Charleston, about three hours from me here, just outside of Charlotte. Um, first sandbar trip of the year with the family Saturday, the tournament, uh, finished second. Nice. Very good. Very, very good. Um, BC, welcome. Outboard videos were good insight. Yeah, that was a guy I ran. A, I don't know how I came across his YouTube channel, but um, came across his YouTube channel. He was he has developed the service to help fix. If you haven't seen it, the um, if you haven't seen it, his name is Josh, um, and uh, he is with S and J Complete Marine. He's the he's the owner of it, and he has. He's come up with this fuel injector service where, one, you can send him your injectors and he'll clean them. Uh, two is he will send you the diagnostic equipment, um, the computer, and he will give you um, phone support so that you can diagnose your issue. If you're in an area without many technicians, you can diagnose your issue. Uh, you can be contacted with him and he can help you sort it out, provide you the parts, give you the 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 experience that he has and um, give you the ability to fix it yourself uh, for a little bit cheaper, just having to invest in the right parts. Um, and then you send the scan tool back, you send the technology back to him and he rents it out to the next person. So a, a pretty cool system. He shared a lot of information. And again, for those of you that have been subscribers for a while, listen, I'm not a master certified tech. I, I, know, I know a good bit about boats how to run them, how to choose the right ones, how to tell good from bad, how to look at a, a used boat. But when it comes to knowing the ins and outs in the motor, uh, he was able to share a ton of great value and uh, just had a, a nice laid back personality. He had no agenda. You know, he I reached out to him. He wasn't saying, let me promote, let me promote. He's just like, you know, I'll put your website up, whatever you want to talk about. We'll give, your, give you an intro. And then uh, we just had conversation. We, matter of fact, we've got a list of somewhere along here. I've got a list of like six more questions that we came up with. We just need to get the time to uh, connect schedules. And he's in California where they've got ethanol. Um, you can't buy 100% gasoline in California. So he also has that perspective on the West Coast, which is, is interesting. Um, we're about a month and a half into the life cycle of a T25 pilot house. Heard anything? I haven't heard anything. So that T25 pilot house is a bay liner. Um, I, I have not, I haven't seen one uh, live and in person. I haven't talked to anybody that's run one. I've watched some videos and done a little bit of digging, but for right now, it's all, mar I mean, it's all bay liner marketing material, right? Anything that I watch is a bay liner dealer presenting it, uh, a, a bay liner created video um our sponsored video but i haven't seen anything from a real life owner that's had a real life experience with it so um i will continue to keep an eye out for that chad thinking about buying a 98 320 3250 bayliner avante our first boat price seems right uh in a boat club lots of help to learn the ropes too big for a first boat um we'll be at a boat club so no, I don't think 32 is too big for a for a first boat. You should be able to get insurance on it, um, and uh, on a boat that size. The age, 
eh, not not too big a deal, but something that Chad that you need to know and you need to make sure you watch this video um, is maybe how you ended up on the on the live in the first place is the how to buy a used cruiser 24 to 50 feet. Uh, that Avante, I know a guy that had one that same vintage that loved it. Um, he had that thing, I bought it new, had it for 25 years and um, and absolutely loved the boat. Um, his might have been a 95 or something, but 20, 25 years and um, had, a, had a great time with it. Him and his wife, they got they got too old and sold it uh, for them to they change styles. But it is a it is a 25 year old boat right um on, on the 98 which means that there's a lot of things that are going to need to be replaced if they haven't and that are going to start breaking down on you if they haven't been replaced already and really really well maintained so make sure you get a survey your your first time boater uh make sure that you get a survey from an expert in your area ask several people around uh, marinas, boatyards, dealers, uh, just walk in the docks to find the, the best surveyor in your area. Spend that money, be money well spent to walk away from the boat if it's got issues. But things like it's got an air conditioning system. Well, if that thing craps out, that's 10 grand to replace it. You've got a water heater. If that thing hasn't crapped out and it's going to in the next five years, uh, you're going to have to replace it. Thousand bucks, depending on where it's located and how easy it is to get to. I don't know on that boat specifically, um, but um, you've got your generator. If it hasn't been well-maintained, if it hasn't been run consistently, it's 25 years old, may need to replace. Again, it's uh, an expensive job to replace it. It's even more expensive to get to it, remove it, and um, and oftentimes they've got to pull the engine again. I don't know that boat well enough to know what the engine compartment looks like, and can you pull it, swap it without removing the engine? I don't know. Um, you've got plumbing. So the head system, the head system have these things called duct valves. They're, they allow the waste to flow this way, open up when it flows, closes, and now it can't go back like a check valve. Well, those are all throughout your head system. And over time, they get disgusting and the plastic or the rubber breaks down and now they stay open so you can get backflow of waste and smell. So odor is another thing. Um, and those need to be replaced. It's not a um, crazy technical job, but as you can imagine, it is pretty disgusting. And it is finding the right plumbing, getting to the right location. Access is, a, is often a challenge. Uh, again, I don't know the boat well enough to know where everything's located, but if those haven't been replaced and the plumbing hasn't been well taken care of, um, that's going to need to be replaced. Not crazy expensive, but super disgusting. And the labor is going to be a lot if you don't want to or can't do it yourself. Then you got the engines, of course. You've got the structural integrity of the boat. You've got, is the cabin still watertight? Is there water intrusion anywhere? Um, you want to check all of those things and assume that if it hasn't been dealt with ac water heater plumbing generator um that those those big major systems are going to need to be dealt with in the next five years at minimum i mean that puts you at a 30 year old boat um and yeah it's it, it there that's 20 25 maybe 30 years and uh, so those are things that i want you to think about when you say price seems right, well, price seems right if those things have been done. That's a different price than if they haven't, because that's easily thirty thousand dollars, if not more, of stuff that not could potentially, but will go will need to be dealt with in the coming five years. And in, in uh, most situations, if it's in salt water, you know everything everything's rougher in salt water, and um, it, it's uh, you know, it's almost better that they have been replaced if if um it's been in salt water hopefully that's helpful for you chad uh, and i see another comment we'll get to you here cool picking up a boat in new finland nice bringing home a way a better price uh 18 km eight, 1800 kilometer kilometer run um <laughs> everything goes to plan okay gotcha 
Yeah, I didn't I didn't connect that, that your question was the same there. Yeah, so I would just grab one and um, maybe have the guy send you a picture of the trailer. You can kind of check the check the angles, but you probably will be in good shape uh, unless there's some, depending on what you're picking up, um, the, what the um, what the angles look like, right? How, the, how it sits on the trailer. But a picture should give you a pretty good view of it uh, if you can get that. Um, on the bigger side for a first boat, take you a full season, um, get the hang of everything. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that boat is, I'm assuming is going to be a twin engine. Um, it might be a single. I used to run a 30 foot cruiser that was a single that, um, it's, you know, this is when I was on the Captain Boomies podcast. If, if you guys haven't, uh, ever doubt Captain Boomies, she's up in actually Jerry, she's up in your neck of the woods in, um, in the Chesapeake. She's a, a wild personality. Her and the broker with the beard have a, who's a, a broker does a lot of sailboat stuff, but some power too. They are, are super fun folks. And I was on the podcast and she, I was talking like, Hey, listen, when I start getting over, over 40 feet, 45, 50, I start to get real nervous. Like that's bigger than boats. I, you know, I've run, I've run a 45 and I've run a 50, but I was like one time with a very, very experienced captain right next to me. And Hey, you know, that, that makes it a lot easier. Right. But she runs, she's a hundred ton master. She runs, you know, like the the um, sailing vessels, and she said, "When un anything under a hundred is getting small for me." So she's running big, huge boats, um, moving boats uh, as a delivery captain, and doing like real, real life captain stuff. And she's like, you know, the reality is when you get to a certain size, bigger is actually easier because it's so slow to react. You've got so many more thrusters and so much so many more options of control than just steering wheel and, and throttles. But uh, yeah, 32 starts to get big, but it's with the, if you take the time to get trained, it won't be a problem. If you say, I want to figure this out on myself. Yeah, you can absolutely can, but you're going to have some fiberglass damage. You're going to have some, you know, puckering of the, of the old uh, butt situations you're going to have some embarrassments, maybe damage somebody else's boat uh, because it is, you know, it's a bigger boat to handle for the first one. And uh, my programs are awesome, single or twin, and um, they will get you there. Uh, a local captain is another way to go that can get you there, although that's somewhat like drinking from a fire hose and you get one day of all, whereas my programs, you can revisit them, revisit them before you hit the water. Then when you're on the water, you're hearing it for the second, third, even fourth time. And it's like almost like I'm with you. Uh, you just play me on the phone as you're going through maneuvers to figure out how your boat maneuvers. And it can be uh, can be super valuable. So there you go. Uh, thank you. I'll get that. Thank you, uh, D. That sounds good. Uh, it's a west wind that pushes me into those boats at the end. All right. So we've got perfect. That, that gives me what I need. And there's. So there's a strategy, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do this here, D. But if you if you're like this, and this is your uh, this is your corner right here. So there's a strategy where you're going to come in, and you're going to get here, and you're going to get as close to the the entrance of your slip as you can, and you're just going to let that wind just slowly drift you as soon as you get. And I don't know what kind of boat you have, D. Um, I think it was a deck boat, but as soon as you get your nose, we'll use that. We'll use this right here, the part of your Facebook user. As you hit that, now you're going to give it just a bump into throttle and a bump out, and you're going to slowly nose your nose yourself in as you're being pushed, and you're going to let that wind push you in as you're going, as you're just using your throttle, maybe even a little bit of. Um, Mm, I'll need to, I've got to think through this. Um, <laughs> where my, everything's reversed, but you're going to give it a little throttle and even a little bit of, of turn so that, well, actually that's not right. Um, you're going to give it a little bit of steering maybe so that you can, you can keep it like that. But again, I don't know. I don't remember what the obstruction was over here. 
I think you were going to hit something like that, my screen. Um, but anyway, that's the strategy that you're going to use is where you, you just, you get yourself situated and then you slowly just let the wind, you're going to be over here and you just slowly let the wind take you. And then as you get there, you're nosing it forward, nosing it forward, nosing it forward, nosing it forward. And now you get, once you get a third of the way in, um, now you're, you're much, much more home free. There might be some steering, uh, that would be required, but, uh, um, depending on how much it's going to blow your back end around with that, with that outboard, with that rudder, that's going to keep the, the nose is typically going to blow more than the stern, right? Cause that you've got that big rudder holding your back end in the water. Hopefully that's making sense. When I put it together for you, I'll do it in a way where I'm actually face down in front of me and I'll film it from the top so that, uh, that you'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hiring, hiring a captain and on a 32, on a 32, the insurance company probably won't require you to hire a captain, uh, but they may, they're getting, it depends on where you're at too, but they may require it in some situations when you start to get to close to 40, that's really when they get, uh, get tough on it. Um, lifestyle might be better going 28, larger cutty. Might be better off with the smaller Sierra. <laughs> um, excellent choice. Yeah, yeah, good, good uh, starter boat uh, to learn the ropes. I, you know, I, I'm going to disagree slightly on the size. 32 is getting big, but it's 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 doable. It's doable if you go into it with the I'm going to educate. I'm not just going to figure it out. Because then you get, you don't know how the boat reacts. You don't know how it maneuvers. You get on the water and it gets away from you. And you just don't know what to do. But like Jerry said, if you hire a local captain, if you get my, my best boat captain course, you're going to know how the boat maneuvers. And I mean, I taught a, I taught a lady, um, as a matter of fact, it's the, it's the boat I, I filmed the twin engine best boat captain on. It was a 35 foot four winds. And we went out on that and she had never driven the boat before. She was terrified when her husband drove the boat before they were first time boaters. And I taught her in like four hours, we went out and gave her the best boat captain program when it was done. Um, and she was, she went from being terrified and didn't like the boat didn't like going out on it because she felt it was so big and so unwielding and, and just too much for them to handle to at the end of the day, I, we were back at their slip. I said, you want to put it in? Like I, you know what to do. Um, and she backed that boat right in zero help for me. Perfect uh, on the money. And, um, and has had that level of confidence ever since because she learned not how to get into her slip, not some silly trick, but she actually learned how the boat handles, what the inputs did, what they, what the elements did, knew how to check for those and account for those. And because of that, she had the confidence to put it right where she want in virtually any situation. And, um, and I think, I think with the training, I, I don't think there's, you know, I don't think 35 is too big. I think when you get to 40 for the first one, one, you're not going to be able to buy it. Uh, because you can't get insurance, uh, you can't get financing if you want to finance it. But I, I don't think it's as difficult if you get the get the right training. That, that's the key. Uh, third season with my 28 single prop took me a full season to get the hang of things. Second season more skilled. <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure. And being on the coast, being on the coast is another big one. Um, is uh, it makes things more challenging too, for sure. Having to deal with the currents and the wind and all that. Uh, looking to upgrade 38, probably in two to three years. That's about right. That's about right. Five to seven is the average time of boater upgrades. Uh, Florida here. Welcome, Randy. Um, excellent feedback. You're welcome, Chad. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I love what everybody else is chiming in. People ask me, why did two-stroke oil pumps fail? Say sometimes motors backfire, spin backwards, strip, gears, motors blow up. What do you think? Uh, why do two-stroke oil pumps fail is I don't have any idea. 
Um, I, I don't know. I just we just know that they have in the past two strong pump true direct injection of the oil pumps. When you pour it in the reservoir, uh, it can it can fail. On the other hand, again, I'm not a technician, so why does it happen? The, all the backfiring and spinning and stripping the gears, that's way over my head. I, I couldn't tell you the the details of it. Just know that they do fail, and you've got to really, really be cautious if you go with an older two-stroke and you're using the reservoir uh, versus just mixing the fuel, um, mixing the fuel in the gas tank. Not as efficient, not as precise, but you also aren't going to run that boat for three hours without oil uh, causing some serious damage. So, uh, 32 first boat, concerned about 18th boat as a first. <laughs> okay, I got, I was like, why am I not reading it? Yeah, it, it doesn't matter what size your first boat is, you're nervous doesn't matter what size that first one is it's a and and i just did i created an updated video for our free boater boot camp um earlier and um and it's why we created the best boat captain programs you know it's the the boater boot camp is free just kind of what you don't know is you don't know as a boater and the best boat captain is listen driving a car with four wheels on the ground and steering from the front and you put it in gear and you use your foot, you got two hands to steer, is it's not even close to driving a boat. But like I, I did a video, I was thought it was gonna do better, but I did a video on the differences. And if you think about it, a boat is bobbing in the water versus being two, two wheels or four wheels on the hard surface. The boat, if you stop, it stops and it doesn't move. The boat, it's always bobbing, the wind, the current, the waves are, are pushing it all around, right? Second, you don't steer from the front and everything just follows through. You steer from the back and it more pivots. And if you have the boat in gear, you got to have one hand on the wheel, one hand on the throttle because you're always going in gear, out of gear, reverse, forward, uh, and you're steering. And this isn't a combination of maneuvers that you're used to doing. When you go through the best boat captain program, I, I put you through easy to do maneuvers so you get not only the muscle memory but you your brain connects doing this i know what my boat's going to do when i'm in a tight situation and i get nervous and people are watching me i've done it in a safe environment uh and i'm i'm so much more confident because hey i've, it, I've done it before and i've got the feel of it in a safe location and my my body gets it and i've practiced right and um it, it's it's something that Again, I taught that um, I, I taught her Brianna on a, a 35. I've had people go through it with um, up to 40 feet that I know of that have been blown away, and I've had people on 16 footers with a 16 foot outboard um, on an aluminum boat that they're like, "This is exactly what I needed." And everybody needs to know because the they just are different than cars, and uh, it's a it's a different world. It's really a different world, Rod. Not sure I concur. That's possible most cases when the oil injection uh, crankshaft fails, it's due to the bashing, the bushing that support the dry, driven. I can't even read tech jargon. <laughs> and Rod is a um, is a very experienced um, person in the industry and um, and is a uh, a dealership owner and a technician, a, a trained technician. So and has been. I, I don't I don't remember. I want to say like 30 years or something like that. So a long time. Um, Dave, good evening. Um, Central Indiana, getting late after a war with the mower <laughs> that ran for mowing season. That means boating season. Yes, it is. It is that time. We've got one mow in down here in the Carolinas, and um, and I am ready, ready for the boating part of that season. Uh, time to get my boat prepped for summer. It is getting there. We are getting there. Joshua. Looking to buy my first boat, 88 restored Key West, new everything, gel coat problems, or 2000 Sailfish with two stroke. Both are great prices. A lot to ask. Can connect with you later. Um, Joshua, I think I sent you an email. Um, yes, you absolutely can connect with me. I do I do my one-on-one -on -one that, um, that you can invest in 
you can ask specific questions here. It's it sounds like you've got some really like it's going to be hard to say um, because there's a lot of detail that I would want to know on the Key West, the size, the motor, the condition. You know, gel coat problems. You know, if you don't care, if it's cosmetic, who cares? You know, if it's structural, that's a whole nother story. But um, um, but the sailfish with the two stroke, again, depends on which two stroke, how many hours, the condition, uh, everything, the size to compare those. But um, um, yeah, feel free. And I think I emailed you. I, I went through again. I've been crazy busy. I went through my emails. Um, the other night and, and cleared a bunch of stuff out of people that I need to get back to. And I, your, your name rings a bell. Uh, so we can do that, get on a zoom call if you want to take advantage of that um, or put a very, very specific question in. So I can, um, I can try to help you now uh, from Florida. Are boats, are boat covers worth it? Mike, it depends on the boat. So if you're in Florida, the one thing the cover is going to do is it's going to protect your gel coat. It depends on the type of boat you have, the cover that you invest in. So I'm going to assume, tell me, make, make me um, make the corrections, but I'm going to make some assumptions that you have a center console. So then the question is, do you have a T-top or no T-top? Um, center console boat covers. Um, so there's a couple way to go. The covers are going to protect, again, depending on the type of cover, the type of boat. Um, let me know. Let's see, Mike. Mike, I'm going to come back to you. You tell me what kind of boat you have so I go down the right path. But the, answer, the short answer is yes. But I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a couple different reasons, a couple different solutions, depending on the type of boat you have that could save you some money or could protect you from... Um, being cheap in the short run and expensive in the long run. I'll, I'll try to give you some details on that. Uh, Randy, depending on the year, uh, older power tower Mercs, notorious for the pump failures. Evan Rue Johnson, nearly perfect. Yeah. Um, been around a lot of them pumps and the coffee. I saw people around at the barn. Um, all right. Just reinstalled my trim tabs after rebarnacling them, <laughs> painting the um painting this winter holding off on launch until may indoor storage was a big winter this year yeah um it is, is nice when the, your boat's just cleaner too typically than being left out on the hard that shrink wrap it, it's got to breathe so that you don't get condensation and, and mold and mildew going but it because it breathes that also means there's there's some dust and nastiness that gets in there uh some cases it could have been simple case of plump fud the flood all right, you guys are going to continue on. Um, with the, I'm going to let you take that two stroke conversation. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Great makes a great Laporte makes a great center console cover. Um, all right, so you didn't tell Mike, you still didn't tell me what style of boat you have. Um, but uh, but here here's what I'll tell you is, yes, I think covers are are critical. If you have any any boat with upholstery, a pontoon, deck boat, bow rider, wake boat, um, anything with nice upholstery, it, it's going to make it last so much longer. And, a, you know, a two thousand dollar cover is going to protect ten thousand dollars worth of interior on, on some of these boats. It's super expensive if it starts fading. So protects it from the uv um it protects it from the nastiness of leaves falling and staining berries and nuts and critters uh although critters aren't 100 percent protected but it, it it helps a lot uh to keep all of the elements off it but the big one is the sun beating down especially in florida that sun is super hard not just on the gel or on the upholstery but on the gel coat It'll fade your gel coat. Um, it will it will get on that non-skid and make it like real chalky because it's so much harder to keep waxed and protected. Uh, but by keeping a cover on, you know, think of think of the time that you use your boat. Let me plug in my my computer here.
Sorry about that. Come on, give me my. I was filming today, and my uh, charging cord is. Holy smokes, now things are going haywire. My charging cord is not where it typically was. So anyway, the cover is going to protect it from that UV damage. And um, it is, in my opinion, it's, what the heck is going on now? I'm a mess today. Um, but it is going to, it's going to protect your investment. It's going to it's going to not only protect the gel coat, but also on a center console, it can protect your gauges. You've got all your gauges, your electronics. I highly encourage if you don't do a cover to put your, your gauge covers on to protect your screens and to put a towel over them. Something that's going to even a piece of canvas or a center console cover like this one here. Even if you're like, hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be short term cheap, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get something along these lines that's just gonna cover the console. That's better than nothing. Um, but you still you have any upholstery that's out. You've got all your gel coat on the exterior on the the um, a gunnels that's gonna get just pounded with direct sunlight on your your deck of the boat. That all of that is gonna get you know unless you're Unless you're waxing it and maintaining it properly, you know, at least twice a year waxing it down in Florida. If you're further south, maybe even more than that. If you're washing it and scrubbing, you know, using aggressive cleaner to get the fish guts off and that kind of thing. Well, that non-skid is going to get super chalky real easy um, and it's going to start to dry out. It's going to start to have problems and a cover can can solve that. So. All right, that's my thought on it. But I, I wanted to talk about the just the console cover. If you got a pontoon, you know, even just the upholstery, the furniture covers can make it easier to use in the in the main season when you're using the boat uh, because you're not having to take that big unwieldy cover off. And sometimes that's why people don't want to do it. It's not a price thing. It's a, a man. It's just too much to deal with. And um so I want to talk about that as well as we were talking about covers. All right. Um, Rock's got a Laporte on a sportsman. Uh, definitely worth it. Story. Yep. Out in the open. Yeah, I guess goes without saying, if you, if you've got a shed for your boat, if you can keep it indoors, not, it's not as important. The key is keeping the elements off it. Sun, rain, um, uh, the staining part. When you leave your boat outside, a leaf can blow on it, uh, you know, a berry can, or a nut can drop on it and stain all sorts of stuff. And uh, there's just a lot of unexpected things when it's just sitting there for weeks at a time. And um, that, hey, it lands on your seat and it stays there. It's it's going to leave a mark. It's going to leave a stain in most situations. My experience, harsh weather of Washington, the best cover uh, is a structure of some kind. Yeah, that where you're located matters. Uh, it's why it's one of the questions I often ask is, you know, where are you? Because that's going to make an impact on on my advice at times. Uh, Captain, did you ever look into Carver covers? I did. I tried to reach out to them multiple times and I've never heard back. Um, I have not heard back from them. So I don't know what, um, you know, if they just weren't interested in talking to somebody that was going to do a review. Uh, if they thought I was looking for money, like, hey, you know, give me a thousand bucks and I'll make you a video. Um, but, uh, they, they didn't respond at all. So, um, yeah, they, they, yeah, they, the, um, from everything that I've heard, they make a, they make a pretty good one. Sent you an email with a picture of my cover. All right. So let's see from Bo here or Bo, um, from, uh, Brock. Pull up his, uh, his cover. Uh, we have a bad problem with jellyfish in the cooling of the skis, dry up the heads. Yeah, very interesting, interesting. Yeah, sucking up, um, yeah, sucking up something 
in the intakes is you know it doesn't it's not just with the jet skis the you know the if you think about a jet boat the intake is like right here and it's it's super powerful right it's gonna it's sucking water and shooting it out at you know seven thousand rpms in some cases it can easily suck something in and hey a jellyfish probably doesn't want to get just chewed up right away and causing problems but you can also you know air conditionings have intakes they're sucking water in and then depending on where your slip is it can that can get clogged up with seaweed and algae and gunk you know depending on mud even uh depending on how shallow your slip is all those things are, are things to consider that it's the it's the type of stuff that we cover in the boater boot camp that you just like you don't even think about uh, until you're in that situation and we try to share as much of that type of stuff as we can uh use the carver product in the past never had any complaints thank you for that bow um let's see if we can get to rock's email i am now live on youtube oh yeah i think i've seen this picture before maybe it was just you, you sent me a picture of the boat um but yeah i mean if you look at that th think about you know when i think of a cover just from experience it just comes down to the rub rail comes up tight around there so you can cinch it up and it's good um, but i love when the covers have additional coverage to go down down the um uh the sides of the boats and cover everything so all that freeboard is not getting chalky especially if you have a colored hull especially especially if it's dark if it's black or blue uh but even you know any colored hull is going to show that chalkiness easier than a plain white one the plain white ones you know it, it gets dull but it still doesn't look off but if you got a black one and it gets chalky white it just looks awful but this will really make that um that gel coat last longer be shinier because it's not getting just pounded by uv um you know 365 days a year and uh you know bows in south carolina at the coast in a salty environment and it's also keeping some of that salt air off a little bit that um i don't know how close he is to the water but you know it's anywhere in charleston you just you can feel and, and smell that salt in the air and again that it's it's going to damage cause additional damage it's going to be harder on your harder on your stuff than if you were you know in nebraska where i grew up where we didn't have to worry about that but i love that cover and i like it looks like it is well made i mean you just see the seams are nice um it looks like it's nice and heavy heavy duty durable um which is awesome and i love if you've got a t-top these covers that just strap up over the t-top and drape down it protects everything and um, they're really not bad to to put in you know it's it's not as difficult as you might think versus the one that go all the way over the t-top and if you got any electronics up on the top at all it, it can be um you know you're, you're taking a chance on breaking something up there so thank you for sharing that brock appreciate it all right let's see here i appreciate it. i got got we're almost up to to 85 uh five star google reviews they just keep uh keep trickling in i love it um about our our best boat captain program um our toolkits uh trailer like a pro coastal boater uh tow water sports with confidence boat buyers academy and of course the guarantee um for that but um Let's see. People flush, right? Yeah, that's for sure. The um, yeah, flushing, flushing an engine, just the just doing it is something that uh, that people just skip over a lot of times. That's why saltwater boats are you got to be that much more cautious if you're buying a used boat in the saltwater environment, is because so many people just don't take care of them. And a lot of that stuff is on the inside of the engine that you unless you get a bore scope unless you start really digging in you, you can't see it always um it's, sometimes there's telltale signs which we talked about in the boat buyers academy but um it's just not everybody understands the importance of that diligence uh live in pine lakes in laporte uh just sent raccoon lake outside of rockwell close to turkey run nice very good a uh, cover websites extremely confident it all makes models options towers swim platforms yeah that's awesome 
Um, yeah, I think we we pulled them up on here before as well. And there's two different companies that they operate under. Um, but uh, but yeah, everything that I've seen about them is positive. And with Dave's firsthand report as well is uh, is good. Uh, the boat solid hour from the coast. It's at my parents' house in Ridgeville. Bass boat lives in my shed behind my house about 30 minutes from the ocean. I'm curious, Brock, do you notice a difference in the salt air impacting your, you know, your stainless or I guess the difference is you run your bass boat in freshwater. Um, you run the the sportsman mainly at, at the coast. Um, so, but I'm curious if you, if you notice any difference in the, you know, the boat sat for, for a week, two weeks in the, in the shed or versus, versus, uh, an hour away. Um, is there a difference? I just out of curiosity, uh, Antonio, welcome new name. Haven't seen in person, but there's a 99 Rabalo for sale. I'm interested in, uh, I know the actual condition is what matters most overall are older Rabalos. Yeah, it's, uh, Antonio, if this is the first live, I've said this many times, um, but it's it's just so important to repeat is it's most important at both that's 25 years old. It's most important what the condition of that Rabalo is, because after 25 years, if they built it so poorly, it's going to it's going to fall apart and it's going to be easily noticeable. It's going to have telltale signs of issues when you do the when you do the um, the tapping on the hull, um, you know, you're going to hear that that thud, dull thud sound versus a nice tink, 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 uh, you know, like you're hitting something real hard and solid. Um, that's the sound that you want. You're going to tap everywhere. There's also a boat that old, you know, somebody's put a transducer in, somebody's added a screw, removed a screw, didn't replace the caulking um, for other through haul fittings. You know, I don't know if, you know, if you look at like a through hole like this, that's plastic, did they replace them? Did they not replace them? If they did replace them, did they reseal them all well? Did they, did they install it properly? Um, all of those things are going to be viewable on inspection. And, you know, again, the way that particular Rabala was taken care of is significantly more important than what level was that Rabala back in the day, uh, because the reality is it, it was a good quality mid-tier boat um, back in the day. I, I don't know of anything that jumps to the top of my head like, oh, crap, I can't believe that one survived. But if it did and it's in good condition and it's solid, it, you're good to go. Like Then it's just a matter of that motor. What does that look like? What does the electronics look like if that's important to you? And um, you know what's the, the value? What's the price going to be? Um, out the door. So hopefully that's helpful for you, Antonio. Uh, Ray, I'm straight east of Indy. Most of my time spent on Morris Reservoir, Bro Brockville Lake, Brockville, Brookville Lake. Oh my God, I'm having a serious problem. Serious problem. Um, all right, so we are, we're about an hour. I think I'm going to call it here. Um, throw in your last little questions and then we're going to wrap it up. I haven't really noticed any difference. Now, when I was in college, I used to live in my parents' condo in Myrtle, right on the beach, just about as bad <laughs> with assault. Didn't move my car for a day. Yeah, see, that's that's the thing that as a I grew up freshwater, and I didn't realize that just being near coast was was going to impact you. And it's you know. We dealt with salt in the wintertime when they put it on the roads and, you know, your car would rust out. My first car was a, a 72 Monte Carlo that um, was a hand-me-down for my older brother. And, uh, yeah, that thing was, by the time I got it, was starting to rust all over in the fender wells. It was just par for the course for uh, metal back in those days with all the salt. And um, But I, thinking about that in the coastal environment is, um, I was curious if you had to be right there or if uh, if a few miles made a difference. Uh, Antonio, the most concerned about the integrity of the fuel tank. Uh, great, great addition, Rod. Um, yeah, when, you, when you're when you over 20 years old on a coastal boat, um, that fuel cell, you know, if it's aluminum, um, hey, what's the integrity look like? Are you starting to get some rust? Is, is there foam surrounding it that's getting wet? 
And, uh, you know, are there pinholes starting or, or worse <laughs> in that fuel cell? And that's something that when you get to that age on a, on a coastal boat, on a saltwater boat, is uh, something really to consider um, to uh, avoid uh, a catastrophe and avoid an expensive repair. Because some of them, hey, you got to tear that whole floor out to get to it and to, uh, to replace a fuel cell if it needs to be. So, all right. Phone mounts on my motorcycle. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, how many cheap phone mounts on my motorcycle? That's funny. Uh, my dad's looking at a Starcraft Tritune. Uh, 19, 150, any input priced right, 35K. Uh, yeah, that seems reasonable for that price, depending on the options, depending on if there's a trailer or not, figure a trailer on that boat, you know, three to four grand on a used package. If you had to buy a new one, probably uh, with the third tune, dual axle, uh, probably looking at close to six um, on something like that now. And um, uh, Starcraft, yeah, it's a, a mid-tier, mid-tier boat. Um, not, again, even a boat that's five years old, like this 19, is, hey, if it was if it was too cheap, it's going to start showing itself. Even after five years, you know, you can see cup holders that aren't uh, draining anywhere. You can see where maybe there wasn't good ventilation and the mold and mildew started. Uh, you can see where the seat cushions were, were thinner. And there, you know, there's really not much support and you're kind of bottoming out in them. Uh, you can see where, you know, looking at some of the wiring connections where they didn't use good quality shrink wrap. And, uh, you know, you can look at some of that, see if there's issues or, hey, it looks great. Um, all of that kind of stuff, you can do an inspection. But yeah, overall, solid mid-tier boat. Uh, make sure that the motor's in good condition. Make sure that the tubes are solid. No holes, no dents, no water in there. Check that transom with the 150. That's not so heavy that it's it's under a ton of torque. Um, but just double check all the welds at the transom, and um, um, and you could find yourself a, a nice quality pontoon or tritune that uh, is going to give you a lot a lot of um, enjoyment. Everyone have a safe week. <laughs> uh, yes, the eclipse coming up. Be careful. Uh, the sea air used to eat our condensers on the AC units for, um, uh, for the condo. We got about three, four years out of them. That's, that's crazy. See, those are things that, that don't even jump into my head. Um, and I'm even, I'm even more aware of it as I've, I've started researching and, you know, I'm three hours inland still where we don't worry about it. Uh, but the dealership I was at had coastal stores in Charleston, in Savannah, um, you know, just paying more attention to it. Uh, but I wouldn't even think about that your AC units are are getting just eaten up every single day in that salt air. Um, Rob, have a good one. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Tracy, how long does it take to make a boat? How long? Well, it depends. So it depends what kind of boat. Stanley. I'm not sure. Is Stanley a brand of boat? Um, but there's two things to consider when you ask this question. Now, Tracy, if you have a boat that's in production and you're like, where's my boat? Why is it taking so long? Uh, I've got a video for you. Let's see, how ordered boats work, uh, why yours may be taking a longer time. So I made this during the pandemic when a lot of people were ordering boats, um, but check out that video on my channel if that's the point of your question. Why is it taking so long to get my Stanley boat? Um, Stanley boat, uh, welded aluminum. So most pleasure boats under, we'll call it under 25 feet, um, not a cabin boat, just an open boat of some kind. Um, you're gonna figure it's gonna, from the time it starts, so start time going down the line to finish time is probably, anywhere from we'll call it five to ten weeks depending on how complicated how big how much upholstery work how much uh detail is on that boat okay so five to ten weeks is we'll call that reasonable time uh for a boat to go down the line um 
pontoons or pontoon six to nine weeks, probably about that to go from start to finish. Depending on assuming they're running single shifts, uh, it could be even faster than that. If it's a pretty base model, they're really dialed in. Uh, it could be even shorter than that, but that's reasonable estimate. Now, here's the thing that is different is when does your boat go into production? That's the thing that can get people that have ordered a boat can get them expectations not matching reality because the reality is that it depends on when your boat starts and when that time starts starts clicking, right? Um, because sometimes if a dealer sells you a boat and there's not a production spot available for them because the these production slots are, are lined up quarter by quarter, adjusted month to month, uh, but sometimes you're just in the back of the line and there's 10 boats that need to get built before yours can even get started. So it may only take six weeks to build the boat, but you have to wait in the back of the line and that's going to take, you know, three months. So you're like, where's my boat? You said it's only going to take six weeks to build. Well, yeah, but your build doesn't start until these other people that ordered ahead of you um, get in line. And so I go into more detail on that video, but that that could be uh, could be your situation. No trailer. Pictures look immaculate. 150 hours uh, looking at it next week. Yeah, Dave, I, I would say, um, assuming everything checks out well, price is right. You're good with that um, that quality level. And my, my parents are in the same level. They bought a they bought a used um, 22 foot with the 150. Um, they bought a South Bay, which is that mid tier. I would say it's the same same level uh, and love it. They've, they've had great uh, success with it. Have enjoyed it. Um, I've used it a ton with my family, water skied behind it, does everything that we need. And yes, there's nicer boats out there. Um, don't, don't be offended by mid tier. Don't be offended by value. Um, that fit the budget. It fits the bill and it's a great time. Um, and, uh, that's where I put that Dave freshwater boat. Um, all right. Goodbye. Thanks for answering my question. You're welcome, Tracy. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> um, BC, have a good one. Uh, just my two cents. If it has no trailer, I feel like 35 is a bit much. Consider how much you have to spend additionally. Yeah. If you need the trailer, uh, that's something to consider. That uh, That's why I said if it's packaged, it's only going to add like $3,000 of value. But if you have to buy a new one, it's going to cost about 6000 So that's, that's a part of the equation if you need one. Um, yeah, you're very, Dave, you're very welcome. Um, glad that you get value. That is uh, a great thing. JD Powers, 49 with trailer. Um, yeah, that's, that is, um, that seems that, that 49 seems um, like it might be on the higher side. Uh, but again, depends on on the model of it specifically. A lot of details, but uh, 35 seems like a good a good uh, value for it. Uh, Tritune, you're looking at freshwater. Uh, yeah, that's going to make a difference too. Um, if it's saltwater, um, if it's saltwater, it's it's not going to be tip top condition. That gives an automatic 15% discount from the the JD Powers NADA guide value, um, and you got to be a lot more a lot more cautious. Um, for sure, use transmission oil on my leaf springs so they don't rust out. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Interesting, um, interesting uh, approach. Yeah, salt water. That's trailers and salt water. I mean, you're dunking them in there and then you're just leaving them set. That you know, it's all the nooks and crannies under the boat in the um, in between the springs where you know that salt's getting and it's just nearly impossible to get out. That's a great uh, a great idea. Thank you for sharing that, Randy. Uh, fresh water only. Thanks, Matt. Pushing down uh, towards the 150 based on your video. Yeah, it's um, that, like I said, I'm not a little guy over over 220 pounds and uh, can slalom ski behind that um, and uh, with the uh, with some weight on it. So yeah, that's I, that's a great uh, that's a good video idea, Randy. Is um, is is tips 
to avoid the saltwater destruction to make stuff last just a little bit longer in saltwater. Those um, uh, those are some good ideas. Uh, let's see. It's amazing how much the water levels have changed over here. Water was eight months ago. Fox River, uh, as much as two foot more. Um, now we're flood warnings. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason they drop them. There's a, a reason they drop them. Um, flew to my sports trailer the first trip of the year. Um, ton on the hand. Um, yeah, that's that's I, I think that's an interesting, uh, interesting video topic, guys. I'm going to add that to the mix. Um, yeah, glad water levels are, are coming up. Hopefully not too much in some areas. I know most of our lakes around here are at uh, full pond. A couple that are still waiting on some rain um, or waiting on some water to be let through. Uh, they're doing some some dam construction on one of them, which I think might be part of it. But um, another good week. We hit an hour. Um, I appreciate it. And um, we'll catch you guys all next week. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.